Hi folks, Greg Lloyd here, professional piano player and creator of classicaltojazzpiano.com with a quick tip for you to help you along with your jazz journey. Have you ever wanted to know what comping is on the piano and how to do it? Maybe you've been in that band situation where you have to play chords and you do not have a clue of where and what to play. Can you read music? Well, if this is you, then stick around because I'm going to show you four must-have tips on how to comp on the piano with no root notes right now. Before we kick off, make sure that you download the free guide below, print it off, and you're good to go. Plus, to do subscribe, hit that bell and the like button. Okay, learning jazz can be confusing and difficult. The jigsaw of jazz education can be hard to put together. There's pieces everywhere. So I thought I would help you all along today with this quick tip. Okay, so let's get going. All right, Wikipedia says in jazz, Comping is the chords, the rhythms, and the counter melodies that keyboard players and guitar players or drummers use to support a musician's improvised solo or melody lines. Yeah, pretty much sums it up. That's it, okay? Because you're a piano player, your job is to play the chords underneath any soloist, okay? Um, or underneath any um, heads or melodies or whatever. So, Let's talk about comping without the root notes, like with a band. So if you have a duo situation, like a, a, a piano and bass, or a trio, you know, piano, bass, drums, quartet, quintet, big band, what do you do when you get that chord chart put in front of you? Or when you're at home practicing, what do I practice? What do I play? Because I have to play in this gig or this rehearsal in a few days or a few weeks. How do I play these chords? When you're in these situations, i.e. not playing solo piano, you can leave out the root notes as the bass player has all of that covered. All right, I just want to repeat that. You can, you can leave out the root notes when you're playing with a band, but if you're playing solo piano, you got to put them in, okay? This gives you more room to move and to play hip chords. And I'm going to talk about how to build up those chords in future lessons. For today, I thought I'd explain how to start off with these four tips, all right? And I'm going to do it on the awesome tune called The Blue Bossa by Kenny Dorham. And what's so cool about with what I'm about to explain to you is that you can do this, these four steps on any jazz standard or any chord chart, and it's going to help you play them instantly, okay? So let's get going. So step one when playing with a band or a duo is that you leave out the root note and you play the third and seventh only in the left hand on the chord chart that's in front of you. And for today, we're doing blue bossa. So you can see the chords here are C minus seven, F minus seven, D minus seven, a flattened fifth, G seven, and C minus seven, okay? And then there's a two, five, one in the key of D flat, okay, so you've got your E flat minus seven to an A flat dominant seven to a D flat major seven for two bars, and then you've got your D minus seven flat fifth, or your D half diminished, and then a G seven, and then a C minus seven, okay, and then a two five leading back to the top, a minor two five leading back to the C minus seven, okay? So this is in the key of E flat, um, but it's in the, um, to, to be more correct, it's in the key of C minor, which is the relative minor or the natural minor of E flat. So like I mentioned there before, a cool thing to do would be to aim for beat one with third and seventh in the left hand, okay? So I hear some of you asking, why the third and the sevenths? Because if you could go back to my previous lessons on classicaltojazzpiano.com, you can have a look at the videos to explain why, but I'll give a quick recap right now. It's because the third and sevenths are the guide tones of the chord. They're the ones that really outline what the chord is. So let me explain. So you've got your major scale, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 
of C. Your major seven is made up of one, three, five, seven. Okay, there's your third and the seventh there. Your minor seven is made up of one, flat three, five, flat seven. And your dominant seven is made up of one, three, five, flat seven. Now, the intervals that are switching are the third and the seventh, okay? They're called the guide tones. You can see that there. That's why they're so strong and they sound so cool, all right? You see that there. Okay, so that's why you use the third and the seventh to start off with because you're, you're, just, you're just hitting a nail on the head. All right, you're covering all your bases like straight away. You're telling the listener and the players that you know your chords, all right? That's why it's so, 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 so important to start right here. So we're going to do it here on the on this awesome tune, Blue Bossa. I'm going to turn on my metronome at 120, and here we go. One, two, three, four. So there it is there, all right? So it sounds a little bit strange without the root note, okay? But I'm going to play the third and seventh there, the flat three and the flat seventh, with the root note. You can hear it there with the bass. It sounds much better when you play with the bass, but we don't need to do that because the bass player is doing it, okay? So if it sounds a little bit weird, that's completely normal, but you will get used to hearing it. And a cool thing to do would be to practice singing the root note. You know, you know, and then do. I'm noticing but in that I'm playing on this for the C minus seven I'm playing the flat three and the flat seventh there and for the F minus seven I'm playing the flat and seventh and the flat and three and then in the fifth bar the, the I've, there's the flat and third and the flat and seventh but I've added in the flat and fifth just because it sounds a little bit slicker with the minor two fives um it's always I always kind of add in the and I know I'm saying against what I just said, but it just makes it sound a little bit sweeter when you when you when you put in that flat and fifth, okay? And then for the G seven, it's a flat seventh and a third. All right, and then you're back to your your flat and three and your flat and seventh, which are the C minor seven. And then for the major two five one in the key of um D flat bar nine, I've got the flat and third and the flat and seventh on top there. And then I've got the flat seventh and the third, and then the three and the seven D flat there. And then we come back to the minor two five one at the top again. And please note that the last bar that there's two minims or two half notes. Okay, so you got that kind of thing. All right. So cool. So that's step one. Let's go on to step two. Okay. So step two is pretty much the same as step one because the the notes are exactly the same but I've swapped the rhythm around and we're playing one in the end of two here, which is a thing known as a Charleston rhythm. So let's have a listen to this one. So I can put a metronome but back at 120 and here we go. So one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two. So there it is there. Cool, eh? So just so you can either, when you get a bit more advanced, you can start to move into, in, into playing that rhythm once you get used to playing the whole notes, okay, all the way through in step one, okay? This is just a, a progression on, all right? So that's step two. Let's move on to step three. Okay, so step three is uh, we've now, we're, we're leaving the left hand exactly how it was. We've come back to playing the whole notes, okay? So we're going to add in a nine and a fifth on a C minus seven to make it C minus seven with a nine. Lovely. And then the F minus seven, we're going to leave the left hand the same. And then we're going to add in a fifth and a nine. Okay, so that's pretty cool. 
notice the movements between those two chords. There's not much movement there. You got these go. This is for the C minor. And then all you got to do is really swap the, swap this note to here, and this note to here. And then you get that nice little voice leading movement happening there. Pretty cool, eh? And we're going to talk about that stuff a bit more in the future. But that's that's for another day and a, and another moon, I'm afraid. Okay. And then leading on to the D minor seven. I'm now playing the um, the chord we did, but I just added on the flat and three on top. I don't want to make the extensions here too thick yet, because uh, like again, but that's another lesson. Okay, so but you can see that sounds pretty cool as it is. And now this next chord is a cracker, the G seven and the flat and nine. All right, oh heaven, and then it comes back to C minus seven. Okay, so that G seven and flat nine, I'm playing flat seven third, fifth, and a flat nine comes back to the C minor 7 with a 9 okay and then for the major 251 for the E flat minor 7 I've, I've added in the, a 9 and a 5th and then I've added in a 5th and a 9 and again look at that subtle movement between you got the E flat minor 7 with a 9 and then I'm going to move, move this F to an E flat and then this to a move nice eh? so you've got this kind of Lovely. And then coming to the D flat major seven with a nine. And then you've got your, your, your nine, which is your E flat and your fifth on top. And then it comes back to the, for the, for the bar 13, just comes back to the, the voices we had before. Okay, so, okay, so let's have a listen to, the, to what this one sounds like. I'm going to put my metronome back on at 120 quarter note. And here we go. So one, two, three, four. Okay, so there it is there, sounding pretty cool to me, all right? So that's step three. Now let's move on to the last step. Okay, so now step four is exactly using the same notes as, as step three, but again, we're just bringing in the one in the end of two or the Charleston rhythm. Okay, so let's have a quick listen to this one and see what it sounds like. Put my metronome back on at 120, quarter note, and here we go. So one, two, three, four. Right, so there it is there. Be careful of that last bar, you know. So one, two, three, four. Why have I done one and three? Because it's two beats each because it's two chords in the bar. Please do when you're at the beginning stage, please feel feel free to 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 write all over your chord charts with pencil or pen if you have to, it doesn't really matter. Just just as long as you get the chord right. Because look, because a lot of my students are scared because they think, oh no, we can't write it because we have to memorize everything with jazz. Uh no, at the beginning, just write down whatever gets you there, all right? Don't be too worried about that. <laughs> so, okay, so after when you have all these four steps, you know, under your belt, you can start to experiment with the different rhythms, all right? So remember that when you do this, that less is more. I mean, don't get in the way of the soloist. There's nothing worse when you're, you're trying to overcomp with the solo you know you're there going hardcore and the soloist is just playing really really lightly okay it's very important like if the soloist is playing lightly that you play lightly or, or if the soloist is getting a bit loud and more mental then you can start to go a little bit more mental too you know you, you got to really open up your ears and you know listen to the whole vibe of what the band is doing or the or, or what the bass player is doing your job is to make them sound good at this point, you know, you'll get your your opportunity to have your improvisation, and that's when you can really let let loose what you know. But 
at when you're comping your your job is to make the soloist sound cool all right if you would like me to explain some more complex rhythms on how to comp and how to how to do that then let me know in the comment area here below and i'll be happy to do a video for you all so to finish up if you're playing in a rock band which tend not to use the four note chords as much if that i mean please don't get me wrong like i know there are rock bands that are using that but you know the majority of rock bands wouldn't you know they'd use triads and stuff like that then you can use the inversions and use the rhythms here okay and and you can use a root note in the left hand okay that was sound pretty cool as well and you can use like one two three four one two three four one two three four that kind of thing okay or if you want to use the rhythm i'll bring it to the minor now so one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and that works really well with root notes or you can do an inversion and then that kind of thing all right but i didn't want to talk about the triads too much for this lesson i wanted to focus on the four note chords because and jazz stuff here okay if you are enjoying the content on this channel then please do subscribe and click that bell to be notified when all the new videos arrive this will help me help you because as the channel gets bigger i'll be able to focus on it a lot more therefore giving you guys a lot more awesome content also check out the facebook and instagram links below and of course the website classicalthejazzpiano.com Plus, as this is a new channel, and I really want to help you guys cut through all of the confusion of learning jazz piano and transform your piano playing. So do you guys have a question for me on jazz piano? You know, what are you stuck on? You know, let me know in the comment area below, or you can email me at greg at classicalthejazzpiano.com. Okay, so I hope this video has helped and take it easy.